All right, the bell means it's time to get started. So we'll get started with the next group here. Um, I, just so you know, Cooley, I handed out a, a little information sheet uh, just so everybody has an opportunity. So um, I gave, I'll show you everybody here. This is Cooley, and I, I'll say her last name wrong. Uh, Tunsk. Uh, Cooley is in uh, Tallinn, Estonia. She is the president of the Baltic Methodist Theological Seminary. So um, uh, she's going to share uh, a little bit about the seminary, uh, her work, and then we'll have a time for questions uh, and also just to better understand the area. So, um, Cooley, thanks for giving your time to be a part of this today. So uh, everybody's looking at you on the big screen here. See how I can do that. There we go. So um, take, it, take it away, Cooley. All right. Well, thank you for inviting me there at the Central UMC. And, and uh, I actually really have enjoyed every time I visited your great state of Tennessee. I think some of the, some of the smartest and, and most, uh, most uh, welcoming people uh, I have met is in Tennessee. So thank you, Scott, for allowing me to visit virtually. But uh, just uh, sharing a little bit about uh, my work at the Baltic Methodist Theological Seminary and uh, just a few things about myself. Kuli uh, Deniste, neither of my names are very easy to pronounce, uh, so don't feel bad about that. Uh, I am from Estonia and uh, sort of kind of my childhood was spent in Estonia and then Estonia changed so much uh, that after I lived 15 years in the United States, in Kentucky and in upstate uh, New York, uh, Estonia had changed so much. So I feel like I've lived in two Estonias, really. I married um, a husband. I found at the uh, Asbury Theological Seminary. Uh, his name is Douglas Childress. He's from Michigan. And uh, he uh, got his uh, um, <clears throat> master's degree and became a, a minister at United Methodist Church and I studied uh, my master's degree and we uh, and later a PhD and so um, God called me to uh, be a uh, president of the seminary but we have also three children Carl, Christopher and Kalev and um, uh, yep we, we are a missionary family since 2015 and Sort of uh, my dream was always to return to Estonia actually right after my studies and I didn't anticipate that my studies uh, will continue with a PhD and will take seven years. And during my studies I'll get married and have uh, two of my children were born before I finished my doctoral work. I also started uh, working at uh, Houghton College in upstate New York. Uh, and my husband was a minister there for uh, a few uh, congregations. So we, we spent some time in ministry in the U US and, and learned a lot doing this. And I feel God was in it uh, because I was able to observe how a Christian college works and be part of different aspects of its work. And the way we were called was kind of unique because when I wanted to go to Estonia, I couldn't. But when I had given the stream up and accepted myself that, okay, there are a lot of God's work that has to happen in the United States also, and, and God, I'm going to be available, whatever you ask, if that's what you ask, I will do that. That was the moment where things really changed. And uh, my husband's uh, father got really sick. And, and as he was sick, we thought, oh, okay, we are going to move to Michigan. And my husband decided that he will change um, uh, his ministry location and we put that request in so but then he had ended up passing away and even more shocking was that mom, mom also passed away within a month so it was literally on the day of mom's funeral where uh, we received an email I received an email inviting would you like to come to Estonia we have need we, we, we could use some help in the seminary and I've felt that, well, it's a nice invitation, but it's a little bit late. And uh, when my husband saw that I'm reading something, he asked, what are you reading? And I said, well, here's this invitation. And he looked up and said, do you want to go? 
And that shocked me entirely because I thought, well, if I am not uh, feeling like this is right, but he, uh, he shouldn't ever. But instead, we all of a sudden together realized that if the invitation had come earlier, we had to say no because of mom and dad. And if it had come later, he would have been engaged in a new church and, and new responsibilities. And so we felt it came at the God's timing. And for, for that reason, we jumped in, we packed, moved, and um, last uh, three years I've been serving as the president of the Baltic Methodist Theological Seminary. It's been, uh, well, quite a challenge. Uh, different tasks that I have to do uh, and uh, none of those tasks I can accomplish uh, by myself. Uh, leading a seminary uh, and, and fulfilling my job description is all depending on the help and partnerships that, that I receive. And for me, it's always a miracle when you lead something that you ask some people to do something and they actually get together and in their various tasks, something will happen. That's every time a miracle. So whether it's a conference or, a, or any kind of task, uh, uh, I, I feel it's always a miracle that God is doing because leaders can do nothing uh, on their own. I thought I'll say a few words about Estonia. Um, Estonia has been in news a little bit more frequently and maybe some of you have seen our prime minister on television or, or talking um, or reporting from Estonia. Uh, we are one of the Baltic states uh, and um, our biggest uh, concern right now is that we are neighbors of Russia as union. We were 50 years uh, part of Russia as our recent history and uh, what is currently happening in Ukraine is, uh, is uh, bringing up bad memories for all our people because, well, our families have those stories when people had to uh, fight in foreign armies, fight in wars that were not their own. They had to fight their against their own people. Uh, they were repressed, oppressed, churches were closed. Some had to uh, become refugees to escape some of the horrendous things that happened in our country's history. And, and for me, that's uh, our family story. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's what happened to our grandparents. This is what our parents went through. And that 50 years of Iron Curtain, um, I remember it uh, first 10 years of my life, sort of this, uh, as a child. Uh, but I remember the feeling of, of changing into freedom. And, and it was like, literally like curtain taken down. It was new world opening. You learn things you didn't know about your country. Your textbooks change. All of a sudden your flag changes. So, so uh, we don't have enough time to give the history, but, uh, but uh, Estonia is always valued freedom and has its own distinct culture. It's not Russia. Uh, it never liked to be part of Russia. It, we are culturally different from Russia. But we have about one third of our people uh, Russian speaking. And also now after 30 years of independence again from Russia, those people vastly, 80% uh, of them identify uh, that they are Estonian and not Russian. Uh, they desire, a, a, but, but very small minority of the small minority is also um, uh, those who rely on Russian media or television or, or who would be still Russian minded Russians. So, we are cultural blend, but we are, yeah, it's, it's, it's a unique history, I guess. And that's what makes current times complicated. Uh, spiritually speaking, uh, Estonia is Lutheran by majority. However, we are still one of the most secular countries in Europe. Uh, we have been difficult to evangelize. Uh, people who like to say no uh, and who need a lot of convincing. Uh, to to be part of um, faith, and I think that then when we have experienced so many truths pushed on us, uh, we really want to be sure that what we accept as our faith. And here is the thing: the positive side of it is once we accept faith, it is our own; it is for real. And uh, so, Estonian Christians are a minority. Uh, less than ten percent would go to church. I would say about seven, eight percent 
20% uh, would go once a year. Uh, but, um, but those are two Christians in every respect because it's not uh, cultural Christianity. Uh, our country values education and um, we are best in literacy, best in math, best in nature science in Europe. Uh, those tests are showing very high scores and we, uh, we live in a context that's a seminary. Uh, we are school in a context of very high expectations uh, to mm. education. Also, we are very digitally advanced country. So our country, we uh, pay for parking with our phone. We have all, all payments uh, happen through the phone. We, I did our tax declaration just it took an hour. Um, it, uh, it is very digitally uh, arranged. In some ways, it's also scary how much information is available for the government uh, about us. And so um, it's, it's, a, it's very, we vote online. Nobody wants to go, wants to go to voting booths. So I don't know how much we are, we are vulnerable because of that. But at the same time, uh, Russia has done a lot of digital warfare against us during this Ukrainian issue. And, and we have actually, our government institutions have so far uh, been able to endure. So uh, at the Baltic Seminary, we have about 60 students, um, give or take a few. And here's some of them, I guess it's uh, before and during Corona, uh, uh, when we were together, it's uh, during Corona uh, virus last two years, we transitioned into hybrid classrooms. So our students um, can participate in person or online. They very much uh, prefer participating in person. And the uh, wonderful thing is that, um, well, the school's mission is to educate uh, for ministry, educate for Christian leadership and mission. And I was just looking at our graduates from last year, uh, 10, 10 students graduated last year. They are all very active in ministry. They are not all Methodists. And some of them are Pentecostals, some of them are Lutherans, some of them are um, non-denominational churches, but they're all very active in the region. So what we do um, is small scale, but what we do is very high impact uh, regionally. So students from Finland, we have actually nine students from Russia, two from Belarus, um, uh, seven from Ukraine. Um, and uh, you kind of realize how in a current political situation to to keep a united in Christ student body uh, with different stories and different family stories and backgrounds has been uh, quite a challenging transition for us, but we, we do hold together uh, as Christians. We have uh, trusted one another, we share prayer requests and so forth. And, uh, but the impact of what is happening right now uh, politically has been not, like nothing as i have not experienced anything like that since 1991 uh, when we became free uh, then we had also tanks rolling on our country and and things could have turned out really badly for estonia uh, so our heart is so much going out to ukraine and and uh, the refugee crisis uh, we are experiencing that with 33,000 um, Ukrainian refugees in Estonia right now, which is 2% of our population. So, so uh, as a school, uh, we need to, uh, we train for ministry, we are uh, present. We are one of the tools and ways how Methodist Church in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Ukraine, um, uh, Finland, uh, Russia is, is operating and um, and that's uh, uh, how we do it is actually um, uh, through simultaneous translation. So our students of many languages, but they have three study languages, Estonian, Russian, and English. We actually have a student, uh, two students from the United States also. Uh, one of them is a missionary in Estonia, another one is a spouse. So uh, everything that's said in the classroom is simultaneously translated into two other languages. And that's uh, how we are. Uh, different people in one classroom uh, studying together for ministry, which gives pretty good basis for 
kind of mission situations where you have to cross the culture and have to be bold to approach different people and, and communicate with them. So I do ask that join us in our ministry in prayer because we are, uh, we are really in our work. We have 11 faculty staff and some adjunct faculty, but our team of doing this work uh, of, uh, of having a seminary, we are really much relying on partnerships, relying on churches. And um, we, we pray for more faculty we pray for more students. We pray that our students uh, uh, would be able to carve out that time for ministry and, and studies. And at this current time, it's more challenging than ever because uh, of all the crisis. I think that we just came out of the COVID and then we entered into this um, uh, new economy of inflation and energy crisis that is you know, kind of came before the war and now the war is making everything and everyone's minds really overloaded. So both our faculty and our students need prayer right now to be able to focus on academics, to be able to focus um, on studies to complete them. And um, also we uh, need prayers for financial sustainability. Uh, right now, uh, and I think in education in general, uh, schools don't bring in profit typically. Uh, in our school also, every uh, one euro that student pays in tuition, we have to find three euros more in order to uh, keep the school. And so there's a lot of projects and grants and, and, uh, and fundraising that has to happen in order to keep the school and keep us in ministry. And the current challenges of COVID economy and war in Ukraine, I, I know you have noticed how... Uh, I know you have noticed. Uh, how I guess the gas is, is more expensive and, and how energy is more expensive. And, and for us, um, for the last, since last January, uh, since the winter, and our winter is six months long, literally, we are six months of the heating season here. Uh, people are looking at their phones, of course, and looking, oh, what's the energy price right now? Okay, I can turn on the washer. Uh, oh, I can turn on the heat pump for a few hours because of the energy prices going up and down so uh, it's it's challenging time it's it's not been like this um, Estonia actually did really well through the COVID um, and uh, our economy was not that damaged but it's very very much uh, under pressure right now with the war and uh, it's challenging for the school so do do please um, uh, consider partnering with us. We have uh, several good churches from Tennessee um, partnering with us and some of our trustees are from uh, from your area as well. And we are so grateful for the resource and for the uh, advice that they give and feedback and, and that fellowship. Uh, the way uh, we partner with our churches and individuals is actually um, umcmission.org advance, uh, we, are, we are one of the advanced projects. And so if you go to umcmission.org and you uh, look for Baltic Methodist, uh, uh, Baltic Methodist Theological Seminary, you'll find us. And all you need to know is this advanced special number, and then you can actually give a donation to the school anytime you desire. And that is always really good because that website helps to, uh, gives us a very good um, understanding of who is our partners who are giving and also gives you uh, certainty that we have received your donation and you can track it. So that's always very good. Uh, and um, uh, we just, um, uh, I guess, I guess uh, for me, that's always one of those things that, oh, somebody heard, somebody's interested in Estonia, somebody wants to be connected to us uh, or wants to hear from our um, read our newsletter, that is the best thing um, as a rector. I know I can't do it myself. Uh, and uh, and um, I'm always so grateful when people are engaging actively in missions. And, and sometimes we think that missions, oh, I have to go to another country, but, but uh, so much missions is also resourcing those who are 
abroad. Uh, we feel it. We feel it when it is happening, our burdens are easier. We feel it's when it's not happening also, our burdens get heavier. And, um, and right now, uh, at this time, we are passing on every blessing we receive uh, to our students. And, and here it is something that with the war, we had to assure our students that um, we continue to receive students from Russia, from Belarus. Some Estonian schools no longer accept. And, and for us, it was heartbreaking when our student came to us and said, hey, my, my parents used to support my studies. Uh, my credit card no longer works because it's uh, issued in Russia. And also ruble has lost so much of its value so that parents spend sending me money. It's no longer a point to do that because it, it, it is worth nothing once you convert them into euros. And, and she looked at me and said, we are just kids. We are, we, you realize we are just kids. I'm like, yes, you are just a 20 year old. And when I was uh, studying at Asprey Seminary, I was, I was her age. And I was so grateful for the churches who supported my studies and made it possible. And so what we are trying to do right now is also raise uh, scholarships in order to help students like her continue. And some of our students due to war, it's hard for them to travel home. Um, especially if you're a young man, would you end up in the army? What happens to you? And um, so, so these are complicated times uh, for us um, as a school and, and personally. So we are, um, I guess, trying to be extra sensitive and uh, at the same time, uh, making sure that um, our Ukrainian students also feel supported, um, and prayed for, and so forth. So it's it's a it's an interesting student body and interesting times we live in, and we need God at this time. I was just wondering if you have any questions or or Scott, you listen to me so patiently. Oh, you're good. You're good. Uh, anybody have any questions for Cooley? Just got about two minutes before we have to dismiss. Uh, one thing she did tell me uh, in the uh, costs. Just imagine your heating bill, triple it for six months. So that's sort of what they're dealing with with energy costs there. And also they have Russian and Belarus students and Ukrainian and Estonian. So there's a lot of um, dynamics at work just from a faith community. So um, we're excited, Cooley, that you were able to join us. Thank you for making the, the extra time. And um, um, we, you know, we give to the, the seminary, but our hope is just that it's not just about money, but it's just a way of um, developing, enhancing a relationship. So thanks for making time for us. We really appreciate it. It is my pleasure. And, uh, and those, uh, if, if anybody, you know, enters into this relationship with me, uh, I'm so happy to answer your questions on the email or any other way. So we are, we are so grateful when a church, you know, checks in and says, well, we supported you or we put you part of our newsletter or, or anything that's happening or if you have a mission conference like this and we also pray for our partners so thank mm. you for what you do and may God really richly and bless you um, because you are, you're doing something that, that is uh, meaningful for you and if there is any way uh, we could um, you know help you to to, to bring most meaning to your ministry or the way you want to partner with us, let us know. So that is, uh, I think we're all doing it to God and because God has called us in a certain way. Absolutely. Thank well, thank you so much for your time. And if you want to find out more about the seminary, there's some sheets here as well. So, all right. God bless you.